Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. Ready to get 30, 30, ready to get 30, ready to get 20, 20, 20, ready to get 20, 20, ready to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month. So give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 up front for three months plus taxes and fees. Promote for new customers for limited time. Unlimited more than 40 gigabytes per month. Slows. Full terms at mintmobile.com. Whoa. Landing an account this big will totally change my landscaping business. It's going to mean hiring more guys and more equipment and new trucks for the new guys to drive the new equipment in. Huh. I don't know if I'm ready. You can do this. And Ford Pro Fence Simple can help. Our experts are ready to make growing pains less painful for your business with flexible financing solutions that meet the needs of your business today when you need them. Get started at fordpro.com slash financing. Good morning, crypto. The 50 trillion, all on XRP, all trading on RTX. Here we are, we find my original projections. But the, the total market is 1.4 quadrillion, everything that's ever out there. And if you start looking across any of those asset classes, they're all starting to move on chain already. Um, and the ease with which we've seen people interested in money market funds, tokenized treasuries, and those types of instruments, the support for stable coins. When you're talking about replacing cash, when I see BTCC, Euroclear, Clearstream, you know, it only takes one of them to flip onto natively digital. And that's trillions of assets um, on its own that move. So, you know, tens of trillions, I think we could see. And bearing in mind it's 1.4 quadrillion, this is still a tiny slice of a huge market. You know, 30 to 50 trillion, all on XRP, all trading on RTX. <laughs> Here we go. Good morning, Warriors. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of your favorite crypto news channel, Good Morning Crypto, where we bring you the most relevant and impactful crypto-related topics from a top crypto research team in the world. And Andrew Cashflow, the title of today's episode is going to be the main topic of discussion this morning, as just last night, we got breaking news that Open Eden introduces tokenized U.S. treasuries onto the XRPL, and we're starting off with $10 million dollars. They've got plans to scale up to $75 million, but that seems to be just the beginning here, Andrew. So first of all, how are you feeling? And thank you for being here. Hey, good morning, good evening, good afternoon from the Netherlands here, 5 p.m. again. And uh, yeah, we have, uh, you know, I get so excited about the crypto market because you see all the politics now going through the, 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 the Republicans and the Democrats, and they're all talking about it. And this is so good for us, for the whole crypto environment and, and the adoption of crypto you know and does it mean all the bad players are out no of course not but more and more people get educated more and more people start understanding what is happening with crypto and it is not all bad it is a yeah actually it's a blessing for humanity and i think the more and more people understand it and it starts with with institutions that will adopt maybe start with small projects but that's what we see. And in apps, you have great articles again. So we can go over that today. I'm looking for, forward to a great show as always. Thank you, Castle. And sometimes I feel like these articles prepare themselves, guys, because the breaking news, I find it, I guess, but I'm not responsible for it. And that's why I'm excited for today's show. Just yesterday, we saw tokenized U.S. treasuries are being added to the XRPL. And we are going to get into that to start off our episode. But I did just want to cover some of the daily movers this morning. We're sitting at $2.29 trillion in total market cap right now. Bitcoin trading at about $63,700. We got Ethereum trading at $31.31. Solana is trading at $164. And XRP trading below $0.60 cents this morning at $0.59.5. Cents. And that's pretty interesting because yesterday during uh, our show, we actually reached as high as $0.65 cents on the XRP price chart. And we started off the episode by highlighting this. So I do just want to set the tone. Yesterday, we made it very clear. If we were able to get a monthly close above $0.65 cents on the XRP price chart, that would be the first time that's occurred since 2017. So, sorry, not the first time. That would be the fifth time it's occurred since 2017. So, it would be a huge bullish indicator for the price chart in general. But let's actually get into the fundamental news from this morning, Andrew. Breaking news, just in, U.S. Treasuries are added to the XRP ledger. Open Eden has announced that it will be bringing tokenized U.S. Treasury bills backed by short-term U.S. government debt to the XRP ledger and to its users for the first time in history. 
Ripple will be allocating 10 million US dollars to Open Eden's treasury bills to begin with, but bringing tokenized treasury bills to the XRP ledger is the next step in our exciting journey, said a Ripple representative. Purchasers will be able to mint our tokenized bills via stable coins, including the Ripple US dollar, which launches later this year. So think about this. Not only is it exciting for the stable coin, we're also getting great news for the ledger in and of itself. And right before I get Andrew's response, this is a video that we saw from June 12th of 2024, just over a month ago, everybody out there. So this is very relevant to what's happening today. What Brad Garlinghouse says is the interviewer asks, is tokenizing treasury bills a major catalyst for Ripple's business model? Brad Garlinghouse response says it's a bigger deal for the XRP ledger. Growth of, of, of the RWA segment is, is unfolding. Um, and I think the, uh, the market has grown since you, you, you've uh, come back on stage. Uh, is that an opportunity for, for Ripple? Should, are you guys going to be tokenizing money market funds and, and the like? Is that an opportunity that maybe is missed? Well, it's an opportunity for the XRPL for sure. And there you have it, guys. So when we're talking about U.S. treasuries, make no mistake about it, the liquidity to be used by the XRPL is going to provide some sort of a strategic advantage. And I did title this episode, it's $27 trillion market. So we are going to get into that as well. But Andrew, I do want to hear your initial response to this. U.S. treasury bills tokenized and minted on the XRPL. You know, what, what I love in this case, why didn't they choose the Ethereum blockchain? Why didn't they choose another blockchain? You know, and for us, it, you know, we are XRP lovers. We, for us, this is so good news. So, and then what I also see, you know, that that uh, 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 Ripple also developed the Ripple US dollar stablecoin. So two things people understand, a US treasury bill and a stablecoin together. And that on the, on the XRPL, it means more utility on the XRPL, more usage of XRP. And of course, it's not so much about uh, about Ripple, the company, but it is about the XRPL ledger. So, you know, we are slowly, step by step, getting there where we want to be. We see it in the politics. We see it now in, 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 in companies. They, are, they start choosing to use uh, crypto and to use uh, decentralized uh, uh, yeah, solutions for their products. So I would say... Let's let's continue with this good news. <laughs> right, Andrew. And I think it's the bigger of a much larger movement. Sorry, the beginning of a much larger movement. We already got 1,052 live listeners here. Show us some love. Smash that like button. And let me know in the live chat what you think of Ripple's breaking news. $10 million worth of U.S. treasuries is going to be minted on the XRPL 100% in the coming weeks. They plan on scaling that up to $75 million. And Andrew, actually, it's part of a much larger fund that's beginning to exist where they would like to tokenize a ton of real-world assets. But I did just want to tie this into to the news before we actually get into the specific article Ripple released last, last night. Currently, there's only $1.9 billion worth of tokenized U.S. treasuries that exist. Now, the $10 million was not tokenized last night, so you're not going to see the XRPL on this chart. But what I did want to point out is how Ethereum and Stellar are really the only two dominant blockchains in the tokenization of U.S. treasury space. Specifically, of the $1.9 billion in U.S. treasuries, $1.4 billion of that is on Ethereum, and another $430 million is on Stellar. We also have Solana here with $48 million, and I believe Polygon is somewhere in here as well. Uh, I know it is. I think it's about $4 million or, or $2.2 million in Polygon as well. So almost immediately, we are going to see Ripple with that $10 million tokenization project become bigger than Polygon and probably scale up to be larger than Mantle and larger than Solana when it comes to tokenized assets, Andrew. So we may not even have to wait for a resolution of this lawsuit before this takes place, but I did just want to show the monopoly that Ethereum has on tokenized treasuries right now because soon Ripple could actually be the dominant blockchain when it comes to this type of information. So with that being said, guys, let's get into the details and discuss it with Andrew Cashflow. The tokenization cash uh, platform, Open Eden, has announced that it will be bringing U.S. Treasury bills to the XRPL for the first time in history. The tokenization of T-bills on the XRPL is a demonstration of how institutions can access decentralized finance and is being driven by the tokenization of real-world assets. These assets are backed by Eden's T-bill tokens, will be backed by short-term debt on U.S. Treasury bonds, as well as the reverse purchase agreements of collateralized U.S. Treasuries. 
Minters are subject to stringent KYC and AML screening to ensure the highest scrutiny and regulatory compliance, as well as standards. So Ripple, which is everybody knows who Ripple is, will also allocate $10 million in Open Eden's T-bill tokens. This is part of their much larger um, allocation to tokenized T-bills provided by Open Eden and other issuers. Open Eden's U.S. Treasury bills represent another exciting example of how all types of real-world assets will be tokenized to drive utility and new opportunities for institutions on the XRPL. So that's a direct quote from Ripple there, Andrew. I'd love to get your takeaway, and then I'll get into some, some specific detail. Um, what, what i like to say, you know, $10 million might not look much, but it is a first step. So what I see happening here, this is a... It is a, a test, a technical test, and watch out. Many eyes are looking here. Many other companies are looking. Hmm, let's see what Open Eden is doing there. Let's see if uh, if uh, the, the XRPL can handle this. Let's see if we can hack it, because a lot of people, uh, a lot of uh, whiz kids, they like to hack that, that chain. So let's see if we can get some negative news. You know, and if everything box slowly no news then then companies will think you know what i also like to tokenize something i also start a small project and that's why i like the news also around the the extra pl because on, on 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 the ethereum blockchain it's also possible but i see a major advantage on the extra pl compared to the to the ethereum blockchain and that is the fees a, a transaction on the extra pl it is almost for free, you know. Just just send some send some XRP. Do the test yourself from your from your crypto exchange to your wallet. It takes now maybe 0 0.002 cents uh, in XRP. Do the same transaction with an, with Ethereum from from your exchange to your wallet or from one wallet to another wallet, and you know fees of six seven eight dollars is not un uncommon. So I think that Ripple is now, or the XRPL is positioning itself in the crypto landscape in, in a way that, that the eyes are now focused on, on Ripple and they will say, yeah, I like it. You know, and of course, I, I also like it, but this is, this is what's happening. Small steps and, uh, you know, and then uh, we, we will get there. And, and you know, it, is, it is like a hockey stick effect, you know? Or a banana effect. It goes slowly, 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 and then it gets up. And and you know, now we have to practice the game of patience. Just be patient. Do not get bored. You know, we know that the market is now going sideways. Or the 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 the, the altcoins are down already for months now. And 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 the Bitcoin and Ethereum and Solana, it's going sideways already since. I think since since April, it's it's boring, you know, it's boring. But just wait, be patient, sit on your hands, and you see, all kinds of stuff is happening, and adoption will follow. Agreed, cash flow. And I think this comment really fits into what you said. He said, "I'm really trying." Super Lippy <laughs> said, "I'm trying super hard to be bullish, but it's very tough to watch." And I think that can happen when you have short term expectations. I think for me, this is an easier time to be a crypto investor than it's been over the past three or four years. Not only do we have spot ETFs, not only do we have trillion dollar companies advocating for crypto, we also have regulations getting passed. And pretty soon, we're going to have the US government going out and buying Bitcoin if this latest bill comes to fruition. We are going to go through this later in the show, but just a little insight into what we're going to get into. Yesterday, Senator Loomis introduced a strategic Bitcoin reserve bill. And here's what's interesting. They want the US government to accumulate up to 5% of the total supply of Bitcoin that would be about a million, yes, 1 million units over the next few years. But staying on this XRP topic and getting into the end of the article, the XRPL is specifically built to power institutional grade financial use cases. Thanks to its proven reliability, efficiency, and roadmap of comprehensive features, such as the automated market maker, the decentralized identifier, the multi-purpose tokens capability, lending protocols, and native Oracle support, the XRPL provides a strong foundation for real-world asset tokenization, as well as institutional-grade DeFi use cases. Open Eden recently surpassed $75 million in the total value locked for its tokenized U.S. Treasury bills, and this reflects the growing market confidence in its approach to bring yields from real-world assets on-chain. 
Now, why would anybody even want to tokenize a real-world asset, Andrew? That way, it has more ability to earn. You can earn 5% on these tokenized U.S. Treasury bills with the ability to keep them mobile. You can borrow against them. You can use these to lend out to other people. So it really just opens up a bunch of new use cases as well as earning you to get a yield on chain. So this is really exciting. And that's not all. You can do all transactions 24-7. You know, markets are now... Yeah, closed in weekends, in ho- public holidays. Uh, it's only open from 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 9:30 till, uh, till 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 4:30 or something like that. So you have so much uh, uh, yeah, times that you cannot trade. I I for example, if I would put my house on on the blockchain, I can sell my house in an instance. You know, if if it is on the blockchain, if it is not on the blockchain. I have to wait and, and, and for the notary and uh, a lot, lot of stuff need, needs to be done. And, yeah. So, you know, there are endless possibilities when, when tokenization is there. And the more opportunity you have to, uh, to, to, yeah, to transact, the more fees can be made. And all those major companies, they all are here about the money. Of course, we are also here about the money, but they make the money with the fees. So, uh, yeah, that's... Uh, that's the driver. And if they get the trust to say, yeah, it is safe now, you know, because it's also, it is also a risk. It is new technology. We have seen a lot of uh, bad things in, in the past. But if, there is, if we are building trust and if the blockchains, especially the bigger ones, are just showing a lot of uptime, you know, and now a compromising of the blockchain, now, now, now stuff that disappear. Uh, also, we, what we see in the in the crypto exchanges, you know, uh, the the bad ones are a little bit elimina- eliminated. Of course, net new ones will be, uh, yeah, will also be introduced and will also go down. So for you, for you also, guys, when we are watching, go with the bigger crypto exchanges. Do not hold too much money on the exchanges, but also, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, put it in a put it in a wallet. But you know, it is all about trust. So first, people need to know crypto and then they need to trust it and then maybe you are willing to do a little bit so for everybody who wants to start open an account on coinbase and buy for 20 dollars xrp for example send it in to to a wallet for example an exodus wallet or an atomic wallet or i don't care send it back to your crypto exchange sell it again and send it back to your to your to your uh, bank account and then you have the whole journey done and then you say nah, that's easy you know so get comfortable and also there's bigger parties there's this for example also open eden they also need to get comfortable with with their processes and this is yeah they are just making you know, tipping their toes in the in the water and uh, th- that's what yeah we see it happening live here and we as uh, as, as retail investors we can yeah profit from it now it, it's a fantastic time never it was never as fantastic in human history as we are now here at in the at the brink of the of the crypto uh, uh, yeah revolution. And I said this to Johnny Crypto on our Twitter Spaces the other night, Andrew. I go, you know what's exciting about doing this show and kind of starting it in 2022 during a bear market is that when all these prices go up, our entire community as well as ourselves are going to be making money together. So if XRP does go on some sort of an altcoin season, which we're going to get into later in the show, which I absolutely believe it will, and the price goes from $0.60 cents to $0.75 to $0.85 to $1.20, that's going to be exciting not only for us, for the group, but it's also going to be exciting that we can share that with our live chat for the first time. For the first time in human history, the Good Morning Crypto live chat and community, we're all going to be going through this thing together. So I'm excited about that entire journey. Guys, we already got over 2,000 live listeners here and joining us. Show us some love. Smash that like button and give a special thank you to Andrew Cashler for joining us this morning. Mario will be joining us later in the episode. So, Andrew, let's get into some of the details about the addressable market here. Because, first of all, I'd like to set the tone. Ripple already has 31 U.S. states for money transmitter licenses. They've received approval across 31 states inside the U.S. Now, a couple of key jurisdictions that do not have approval, California, New York, Texas, and Florida, but a bunch of other states, South Dakota, Utah, West Virginia, um, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, Maryland, Massachusetts, all of these different big jurisdictions have given Ripple a money transmitter license. They also have one in Singapore. So I did just want to provide that detail here. But one of the titles of our episode today was U.S. Treasury bills market is 27 trillion U.S. dollars. Yes, you heard that right. Not billion, 
27 trillion. So of the 27 trillion US dollars of marketable US treasury securities that were outstanding in 2024, just below half were treasury notes. Treasury notes have maturities of two, three, five, seven, or 10 years and have a coupon payment every six months. This is coming to the XRPL, Andrew, and those coupon payments, which are treasury notes in the future, will be done automatically through smart contracts on the XRPL. And we had a great episode yesterday with um, Cyprus and uh, Mr. Aquaman where they talked about the capabilities of DeFi on the XRPL and the fact that the automated market maker was just launched in March of 2024. So now you're going to have the ability to natively earn yield on your XRP token by being a liquidity provider for the first time ever. Now, there's risk to these liquidity pools. Of course, there's risk in everything. But what we can do as a community and what I'm going to be doing and providing on this show going forward is how our listeners can earn safely by using some of these DeFi protocols. So just tying this all together, $27 trillion market, Ripple starting off and stepping in here with only $10 million. And remember this, guys, the entire market right now, it's only $1.9 billion in tokenized US treasuries. I read a quote from BlackRock last night, Andrew. They're anticipating that market becoming $13 trillion with a T by the year 2030. That is only four and a half years away. Sorry, is that? Sorry, <laughs> I forgot we're in 2024. Sorry, guys, that's about five and a half years away. But still, massive market, massive opportunity. What are some of your key takeaways here? Um, you know, you said a lot here about AMMs and liquidity providers and also about the XRP licenses. Let me tell you a thing. What is a network? For example, when you use XRP as transmission for, for, for money transmission, what is a network? Is the smallest network is, for example, a transmission from A to B. But if, if, if A also can transmit to C and to D and to E and F, you know, the network gets bigger. So what you see is that the more uh, yeah, uh, uh, nodes you have in a network, the bigger the network gets. And that is, yeah, that, that, that's a network effect, but they all have this uh, XRP license. I know, for example, in Japan, they are, uh, yeah, they are uh, uh, already used in, in Japan a lot with, uh, with X, XRP uh, uh, transfer or for money transfers. So that, that's a huge development. And you, you gave the list of all the, the states that already have these, uh, these XRP licenses to transfer money. Yeah. That's fantastic. And then I didn't even talk about AMM and liquidity provider, but maybe 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 later in the show. Andrew, one of the things that I did want to point out as well is we covered this yesterday, the connection between the, the Digital Euro Association and how they officially partnered with Ripple at the end of 2022. Well, our guest yesterday, Cyprus, pulled up a document from February of 2024 where it stated that Ripple was the distributed ledger technology provider for the digital euro project. You heard that correctly. And what I'm doing right now is I'm pulling that document up in the background. But one of the things that I can start with while I'm looking for that uh, document in particular is this other document that we found from the Bank of England. And Andrew, I think this all ties into the tokenization of treasuries. That's why I'm breaking it down. Cross-border payment synchronism. So the Bank of England's official website presents a joint project roadmap between the 2024 cross-border payments protocol and Ripple, and they give a shout out to Ripple for demonstrating that synchronized FX transactions can be simulated using their real-time payment system. Really exciting because there's not a lot of blockchains that are even involved in these conversations, but the fact that they're being referenced in some of these public documents, they don't want us covering this information on Good Morning Crypto, Andrew. They want us talking about Pepe. They want us talking about Shiba Inu, maybe even a little Dogecoin, some Bitcoin talk. They do not want us talking about how the banking system is changing and regular everyday people for the first time in human history have an opportunity to profit. That's not my quote. That's what Brad Garlinghouse said. So the floor is yours and then I'll move into our next article. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it, 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 it's great development and uh, we have great opportunities. And, and then still, let me say you something about this, this AMM and liquidity providers. What is an AMM? What is an automated market maker? That means if you want to buy, for example, a stock on the stock market, there is somebody else on the other side that, that needs to deliver that stock. And the other way around, if you want to sell, there's somebody else that buys it. That is called a market maker. So you can imagine you can automate that market maker process, and then you have to provide, for example, with, with, uh, with, with Ripple, you should provide dollars and, and, and Ripple for uh, sorry dollars and, and, and XRP for uh, for a pool and then people can transact with it. 
So if you can take out the whole human or, or the, the administrative interaction and you all automate it in, in smart contracts, you can imagine, yeah, if you provide the liquidity to such a market maker, there is an, an, another a possibility for retail to make money. You know, with, with stocks, we can have, uh, 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 you, you can have possibilities to earn, you can have, uh, and with, with crypto, you can have possibilities to earn and to stake, but AMM and, and liquidity provider are also possibilities. And I see a lot more with DeFi stuff is coming up, you know, that you can borrow money. Here, let me tell you a story. What you can do, if you have some Bitcoin, you know, for example, you have one Bitcoin and you hold it for another four or five years. And you, what you do is you can borrow from your own Bitcoin. So don't sell it, just borrow from your own Bitcoin and then live from what you borrow. So of course you have to pay some, some interest, but that Bitcoin will grow over the years. So if you can, if you borrow less than it is will grow, you can, that is a sort of retirement plan. And you know, if you think about it, so you get money in your pocket, it is borrowed money, it is not income, so it is not taxed, and still you hold your whole amount of Bitcoin. And and I think there will be parties that will join and and, and will jump in that 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 hole. And of course, at, at, at the moment it is still a little bit risky to do it, but if you now invest in your Bitcoin, hold hold it for maybe another 10 years and you can retire earlier. And maybe in future I will work out a program for this. Also in the Andrew Cashflow Academy, it will be. So uh, Andrew, look look it up at andrewcashflow.com. And uh, I, will, I will investigate all that kind of stuff because I love the technology behind it. And also to make it simple for the people to understand and, and lower the threshold to use it. Because it is not difficult if you tell a difficult story. Then it is difficult. And most people tell a difficult story because they don't understand it at all. So I agree with yeah. you, Cashflow. And we started off this episode by showing a clip from the Archak CEO stating that he believed thirty to fifty trillion dollars would be transferred or being or being uh, used as a liquidity provider on the XRPL by 2025. Obviously, that's not going to take place. We're only four months away, five months away here. But I think the idea goes to show that a massive amount of treasuries, a massive amount of tokenized assets, are going to be coming to the XRPL. And it's really about regulation from this point forward. But I see our listeners are talking a lot about the prices. Let's provide some optimism from a price chart perspective this morning. As Fed Chair Jerome Powell states, an interest rate cut could be on the table for this September. Here's 11 seconds, and we'll discuss why this is important. Here we go. And maintaining a solid labor market. If that test is met, a reduction in our policy rate could be on the table as soon as the next meeting in September. So you heard it there, guys. If we get a reduction in policy rates, Andrew, and we get a reduction of about 50 basis points, not only are we going to see XRP, all of our altcoins increase, we're going to see Bitcoin increase. We're going to see the stock market increase as well as housing prices. So this extends well beyond cryptocurrencies. And while we have an inflation issue right now, we're seeing other central banks around the world, including the Bank of Canada, many European banks. We've even seen the UAE reduce rates in the past four weeks. That's a great indicator that if they're doing it, typically the U.S. is soon to follow. And I think Jerome Powell gave us a little bit of insight there. Maybe you can talk about this for a minute here, and then we'll get into our next article. That's exactly what I mean. I know we, we already knew that that, uh, that interest rates will go lower. And then why do, it, why do you call it reduction in policy rates? You know, just say we will lower the interest rates. Then everybody understands it. No, we want, you know, quantitative easing easing just just such a term we will print money all the time you know that is quantitative easing easing so it looks it looks also yeah nice but it is we are trapped as, as human being in language because the language we don't understand so that's why we need to make it simple and uh you know lowering interest rate thank you jerome powell is good for crypto and why because it also lowers the interest rates on your bank account and on other uh, financial instruments. And then people start searching for more riskier assets to make a better re rate on return. So, and then it is good for the crypto market. I also think it's good for the, for the stock market. So, uh, because companies will also grow when they can borrow money at a, at a cheaper, cheaper rate. 
So yeah, it's good. Um, I hope the, the 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 economy will not overheat because if I see also here in the Netherlands, if you like to do something for your house, uh, ask for a painter or a or, or lumber or a, uh, uh, you know somebody who has to do to fix something on your house, you can't get anybody. Bring your car to the to the to the to the, to the car shop for for an old change. You know you have to make an appointment for maybe next week. So it's it's really we have we have an issue with there, there's almost no un unemployment at the moment, and then you're still going to lower rates. I think it's only meant because governments cannot pay their their interest anymore on their loans, and I think that's also a, a major political issue that interest rates must be lowered because yeah, what else? Right, so, Andrew. Yeah. And I feel like we're in a situation where even the regular everyday retail investor, the regular everyday person understands that the U.S. dollar has been radically devalued since 2020. We've seen national debt go from $23 trillion for the United States to over $35 trillion in only a four-year period. That means we've taken on over $12 trillion of debt, over $3 trillion a year for the past four years. It's just not sustainable. And I think that's why we're seeing guys like Mark Cuban, Elon Musk, Anthony Scaramucci, well, uh, Mike Novengratz, everyone is talking about the collapse of the U.S. dollar. And then they're, they're conveniently tying Bitcoin and crypto into those conversations like we are doing on this show. But it's actually a much bigger issue. The everyday person who doesn't own any crypto is going to have to deal with this. And I think we're feeling it in the grocery store. We're feeling it at the auto shop, like you said. We're feeling it with our everyday purchases. And I like the comment that one of our listeners made. They said, congratulations, Abs. Your house is worth more, but the bad news is you can't afford food. And that's kind of how it feels like, yeah, the Bitcoin price may increase, but so did everything in the stores. And I believe the true inflation rate of grocery prices inside the United States is actually up 40% in the last few years. So that means... If you're paying 100 bucks for your groceries a week, you're now paying over $140 every single week to get the same exact goods from the same exact store. So I do think we have a bigger problem here, but I want to keep it optimistic. And we're talking about cryptocurrencies. One of the things that I highlighted in the bottom of this article, Andrew, was the fact that tokenized assets are going to be run on the XRPL. And we're going to see hundreds of millions. And listen to this direct quote. They plan to bring hundreds of millions of dollars in tokenized real world assets onto the XRPL over the coming year. So this is a release. This is an announcement that was released last night, and they're telling us hundreds of millions of dollars in tokenized assets. So when Mario joins the show, we are going to get into that article, but we haven't even addressed this massive news from today, Andrew. So I want to get your thoughts on this as well. Senator Loomis introduced a strategic Bitcoin reserve legislation bill yesterday where she would like the U.S. government to implement a one million unit Bitcoin purchase program over a set period of time to approximately accumulate five percent of the total supply of Bitcoin. This is similar to what we've done with gold. For anybody who doesn't know, the United States government currently owns over 19% of the gold in the world. It's the same idea being applied here to Bitcoin. If Bitcoin's going to continue to increase in price, then it's dumb for the, for the government not to utilize that as a way to combat inflation, as a way to combat national debt. And I think some people get carried away. Like Senator Loomis said, if we had a million Bitcoin for the next decade and the growth continues the same, we'll be able to reduce national debt by 50%. I think that's a little bit dramatic, but I think the idea is very simple. You buy an asset that's appreciating against the U.S. dollar because the U.S. dollar is collapsing before our eyes. So, Andrew, I'd love to get some of your thoughts. First of all, do you think we will see this strategic bill pass? And if so, what do you think that could mean for Bitcoin holders overall? U.S. government not only buying Bitcoin, aiming to get a million Bitcoin, which is 5% of the supply. Yeah, 5%? One million. One million Bitcoin. Where, where, where do you hold it, you know? Oh, Andrew Castlow, I believe he froze on me, guys. So I'm just going to stall for a second here while he gets reconnected. But I think what he was getting at is that if we're able to accumulate a million Bitcoin, that's much higher, far more dramatic than we thought. And just a couple of weeks ago, not only was Gary Gensler working to battle this industry. Oh, Andrew, you're back. Floor is yours. Yeah. yeah, what I want to say is one billion, oh, one million of Bitcoins, you know. I, I can't imagine that I have to manage that. You cannot put it in one wallet. You need hundreds of thousands of wallets to, 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 to distribute it and to, to save it. Where to save all those seed phrases, you know, all those 12 and 24 word seed phrases. How to do that? How to make sure it is not stolen? Who, who to trust? You know, many people will be involved. But is it a good move? Absolutely, it is a good move from, from the, for the United States because 
if this 1 million Bitcoin will maybe do a 10x in, in the future, uh, a lot of debt can be paid off from 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 yeah from what 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 us has but i fear that if the bitcoin reserve will increase in value they also will borrow more money and the whole game will continue but there is also a positive thing about this is that if the us will buy and not sell there will be no selling pressure there will be buy pressure so that means prices go up and, and probably they will buy a lot over the counter. That means they buy as, uh, immediately at, at, at miners. But they, that means that uh, the, the amount of liquidity also on the exchanges will also go lower. So, yeah, pri price one way or the other, prices need to go up. And if they buy so much Bitcoin that it is even more than that is mined per day or per month or, or, or per year, then, yeah. You know that at and least it, there, there must be some friction, so price need, needs to go up. And then, Andrew, if they were going to do this over a four-year period, the U.S. government would have to go out and start purchasing today basically 652 Bitcoin every single day if they were going to reach this one million dollar number over the course of a four-year period. Now, I do like what this man had to say as well. They're talking about the discounts that are happening in the crypto prices. We are getting a market tanking. We are seeing the market begin to tank right now. Gonzo's called for this for quite a while, so I do want to highlight this. XRP is down to 58 cents here. I've seen people like Waters Above and Gonzo comment, we could see uh, XRP go as low as 50 cents. Do not get overly fearful. We are clearly in a bull market, and we're highlighting all the positive news that's coming out. I also want to highlight, Andrew, we are going to get a resolution in this lawsuit in the next six weeks. If the timeline is right, Judge Torres is set to make a ruling in the first two weeks of September. Now, as we know with this Ripple lawsuit, plenty of times these things get delayed, plenty of changes can be made. But as a journalist in this space, I know definitively the, no, the, the, the word on the street right now is that Judge Torres will make a definitive ruling in the XRP case starting in the first two weeks of September. So would it surprise me? Not at all. And I think over the past couple of weeks, we did see XRP acting very differently from the rest of the market, going up nearly 40% in a 30-day period, guys. So Really exciting. I think these things can get super volatile, and, and a lot of times it's under uh, appreciated what these assets can do in a short period of time. Andrew, I did want to tie this article in because we have a lot of listeners here, guys. We have 3,000 listeners joining us. Thank you for being here. If you're enjoying the show, smash that like button. We got a handshake deal on GMC. If you enjoy the show, you hit the like button. If you don't enjoy the show, it's not required. So think about that, Andrew. Very, very friendly over here. Yeah. But this is the breaking news. The SEC backs down on claiming Solana, Cardano, and Matic as well as a dozen other cryptocurrencies, are not securities in the Binance lawsuit. And why am I tying it into this morning? Because this, goes to go, this just goes to show the radical sentiment change we've seen in the crypto market over the past two weeks, whether it's Bitcoin, altcoins, regulation in general. These types of articles are, became, are becoming much more popular. And this is some mainstream news developments that I think our listeners should be aware of. If Gary Gensler is now dropping the allegations that Solana and Cardano, as well as Matic, are not securities, what are we doing here, Judge Torres? And where are you with this definitive ruling? I can't believe this case is still going on, Cashflow, but you give me some of your thoughts and, and how this news kind of ties into the narratives that we've been discussing. Mm, I smell politics here. I smell it everywhere. So what is happening here? You know, we know about the Bitcoin conference of last Saturday where Trump spoke and he said, we will, he will fire our, our friend, uh, Gary. No, yeah, friend. So, and you saw the whole crowd was, was ecstatic. And then he said, I didn't know he was that unpopular, but he knows that if he does stuff that is yeah, in favor of all those crypto investors, they will vote for him. So I think the, the other party, they, they just cannot do anything else than at least embrace also a little bit the, 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 the crypto voters. Because else they, they will be sure they, they will, will, will lose the elections. So, yeah, you know, and then if Solana, ADA and Matic, who, who took the in initiative to not rule over this, uh, these tokens anymore? It was the SEC themselves. So, you know, better that you say, okay, I will leave the stage before, I, they, they, will, before they will send me away. So and and this this is a little bit happening. They they are feeling that they will lose it, 
and now they say okay let, let's do it a little bit less and a little bit nicer and easier so you know and now we know we are winning we are winning this game we are now on the brink from the change from they fight it till they, they want to join us so here here we go here we come and uh, just we have to keep the pressure on and everybody who's working on this and i think also the good morning crypto show contributes to the to the to the to the feeling and to the knowledge and the understanding of the of the retail investor guys we will we will fix it and we will get there agreed cash flow and somebody said end the show now the market is dumping guys we were here during a bear market. We've done plenty of shows when the market is dumping. And regardless of what's happening in the market, we're going to continue to be consistent here on Good Morning Crypto. Now, Andrew, one of the things that's exciting here is that they initially released a list of 68 tokens they considered to be unregistered securities. In this Binance lawsuit, they dropped allegations against about 12 of them. So they dropped the allegations against Binance Stablecoin, Solana, Cardano, Polygon, Cosmos, Sandbox, and Decentraland, which are metaverse tokens, as well as Axie Infinity, a gaming token, and Cody. So it seems like regardless of what aspect of the industry they're focused on, they're removing the allegations that the majority of these tokens are unregistered securities. That's bullish for the entire crypto space because the SEC has done nothing to help the industry. They've actually held it back. And we know Gary Gensler's days are numbered at the SEC. We even had 27 Democratic representatives write a letter to the DNC this week yeah, 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 asking yeah. for the war on crypto to end because they know there's going to be repercussions not only with money, but with votes, Andrew. And right now, it is voting season here in the USA. So with that being said, guys, I do want to get into our next article for today because the actually, I was going to get into some NFT content, but I think it's more important that we actually address the news from today, Andrew. And this is another thing that I thought was very interesting. Earlier this week, we covered this a lot. Kamala Harris' team met with Ripple, Circle, and Coinbase. And that's important because I think it goes to show not only is Ripple here to stay, but they're a pillar for the crypto industry inside the United States. Well, Gemini's co-founder here, the Winklevoss twins, the man who actually created Facebook and then Zuckerberg took the idea, he's commenting on Kamala Harris' team here and he's actually calling for action because words are cheap. And I want to give a shout out to Johnny Crypto because he's been telling us that for a long time. Tyler Winklevoss said that Kamala Harris should take action to undo the four years of terror that have been unleashed on crypto during the Biden and Harris administration before November's election. Democrats and Harris declining the invitation to speak at the Bitcoin National Conference was a missed opportunity to reboot the relations with the crypto world. And I think that's a great point. If Kamala had showed up, made some pro-crypto statements, and she actually did a good job, I think it'd be very hard for people like us to be critical, right? So she did miss an opportunity there. But Harris is set to address her pick for chair of the US SEC. Listen to what he says. No more guessing, no more hoping, no more surprises. Our industry shouldn't tolerate any possibility of a repeat of what we've experienced over the last four years. We need to see tangible change and proof of commitment to treating our industry fairly and dealing with it in good faith going forward. I'd like to get back to building full time, and I know a lot of you would too, but in order to do this as an industry, we must demand that both parties embrace our industry, treat it fairly, and do everything in their power to ensure that America is the best home in the world for crypto companies. So- and this is the last statement here. I think our listeners are like this. He said, the Biden-Harris administration has four years to unwind the terror that's happened and only 100 days before November to do it. So the ball is in their court here, guys. And I don't think anything tangible is going to happen. They're not firing Gary Gensler. They're not launching any comparable regulation in the next four months. But what I think will happen is a lot of talking heads will do a lot of talking behind the microphone about the change that will happen starting in 2025. So I did just want to get your thoughts here, Andrew, because a lot of prominent, powerful billionaires are not only advocates of crypto, they're very, very anti-Gary Gensler. And that used to just be an XRP thing. It used to be the Ethereum and Bitcoin guys were supporting that XRP was a, an unregistered asset. That has completely changed. We're sitting here in a different environment. And I think it's quotes like this that really highlight it. Any quick comments here? And then we can get into our next article. You know what I think? I if I would be Gary, I think so around mid-October, mid I would resign from the, from the SEC. I would say, you know what? I, I I did my job. I did my best. It's time to move on, and I will I'll I'll give the uh, the, the follow up to somebody new who, who is uh, even maybe better than I am. And you know, that's what I would do, and not wait for Mr. Trump to fire him. I, I wouldn't do that at all. So, but here again, you know, it. What is it about? It is about money, and it is about power. Yeah, and that and that's what those politics want. So 
don't do what they say. <laughs> yeah, he, he looks a little bit grumpy, but but do what they do. So if Kamala would really be serious with crypto, she would replace Gary now. Do it now, or at least uh, make make him resign at this moment and put a a, a guy there that is pro crypto. If I do not expect that they will do it, but it would would be wise. At least that she is talking with Ripple uh, and Circle and Coinbase is very good. But still, we need to see what they do and not what they say. So, yeah. You know? Agreed, cash flow. And this is what I was pulling up in the background. So the breaking news earlier this week was that Kamala Harris' team confirms that they had met with Ripple, Coinbase, and Circle. Now, what I did is I pulled up a presentation from 2021 with Goldman Sachs, identified three opportunities and payments for accelerating use cases in the crypto space. It was the exact same companies three years ago that it is today. Ripple, Circle, Coinbase. These are the pillars of the crypto industry inside the United States. And that's why I'm so excited about the US treasuries being minted on the XRPL. Now to begin this episode, we talked about the CEO from Archax predicting, hundreds, predicting tens of trillions of dollars transferring on the XRPL by the year 2025. For anybody who didn't catch that clip, they're doubling down on that in this article. So listen to this. Ripple also recently announced its work with Archax, the UK's first financial conduct authority, regulated digital asset exchange, broker, and custodian. They have plans to bring hundreds of millions of dollars in tokenized real-world assets onto the XRP ledger over the coming 12 months. Over the past decade, the XRPL has been home to over 1,000 projects crossing over 2.8 billion transactions without failure or security breach since 2012. They're currently supporting over 5 million active wallets, with a network of over 120 validators worldwide. So I think it goes to show they've got the proof of concept down here, Andrew. There's no doubt about it. The world is ready for these technologies. And I'm worried that we're going to have to go through some major financial collapse before it becomes consensus that we need to use crypto. Really quickly, what's your speculation on that? Do we have to have a movement where everybody's fearful in order for us to start accepting these things as a, as a normal thing? Often, you, you either... A mindset shift also for, for, for a whole country goes very slowly or with the sort of black swan event. So, and you know, we, we have seen some black swan events in the. I believe, I'm, I apologize for that, guys. I think Andrew's just glitching a little bit this morning. So while he's getting reconnected, he was talking about policy issues. I want to give a shout out to John Parent as well. It was great talking to you on the Twitter spaces the other night. Andrew, we got you back. Perfect. Floor is yours. Yeah, I need to do. I have to fix my my internet connection because sometimes it's somewhat unstable. Sorry about it, but uh, yeah, a little bit lost my train of thought. But I think what actually the article you showed that how much is already done on the XRPL, you know, and and the, the thousand projects, the two point eight billion transactions without any failure. Solana cannot say that at the moment. XRPL can say this so because they are much older because they are from 2012 but it also you know we need more and more positive confirmation of the of, of crypto so all that negative sentiment should go away institutions should start loving it should start seeing the opportunities to make money and then we will slowly move forward into our uh, goal to make money as a uh, retail investor Agreed, cash flow. And I like this statement here as well. Kamala is making a deal with Mark Cuban and 100 venture capitalists to look for new attitudes on crypto. Again, I don't want to hear her looking for new attitudes. I need to see some action here, Andrew Cashflow, because she was vice president for the last four years while her administration went after the industry. They attacked Solana, Cardano. It extends well beyond XRP. So I don't want you to think we're only upset with XR with, with the way that the SEC has treated XRP. I actually think they've treated the entire industry unfairly, and that's why Tyler Winklevoss was making those really strong statements. Now, we do have some people who are just joining the show, so I'm going to briefly cover the breaking news once again from this morning. Breaking news, tokenized U.S. Treasury bills are confirmed on the XRP ledger. Open Eden has announced that it will be bringing U.S. Treasury bills to the XRPL. And why is this important? Because bringing U.S. Treasury bills to the XRP ledger is the next step in a very exciting journey. Purchasers will be able to mint their tokenized U.S. Treasury bills via stablecoins, including Ripple's new stablecoin when it launches later this year. We already know the stablecoin is not only going to provide DeFi use cases, they're also 
going to provide institutional use cases. So it's opening up doors for the XRPL here, Andrew. And the addressable size of this market, $27 trillion. Think about that. $27 trillion in a space right now with all projects combined is less than $2.3 trillion. And that's why I think the projections that we're seeing out of BlackRock, out of Citibank, where they're predicting over $10 trillion in tokenized treasuries by the year 2030, that's so important because that total space right now is less than $2 billion. And it's dominated by a terrible technology from my perspective in Ethereum. Yes, is it better than the traditional ways of, of managing treasuries? Sure. Is it the best product in the market? Absolutely not. And that's why I think this whole transition, it's beginning. It's not actually close to ending here, Andrew. Now, I did want to get into this Stablecoin article, and we can tie the Ripple news in here as well. Um, this is funny. Ever, uh, the Evan Burke says, we are content makers exit strategy, and that is all. Evan, this is a free program. In case you didn't notice, this YouTube channel is not even monetized, my friend. So we love you. We appreciate you. Stay positive out there. We're not responsible for the bearish price action on these days. Now let's get into this news, guys. USDC's trading volume soars 48% in July, driven by Mika's new crypto regulations. And why is this happening, Andrew? I think people are moving away from Tether and into a regulated stablecoin here as Circle is the only, for the time being, regulated stablecoin in the Mika jurisdiction. Tether's being pushed out of the market, and this data really goes on to show that. On July 31st, a new data report was released showing that trading volume for USDC pairs on centralized exchanges reached $135 billion as of July 25th. And while its market cap rose only 5%, sitting at about $33.6 billion. So the, uh, the volume is dramatically increasing, but the actual market share is gradually rising here. With the implementation of the European Union's Mika regulatory framework, Circle became the first stablecoin issuer to be approved by the regulators on July 1st. During that same period, Tether grew at a slower rate, but still posted a record 11 consecutive monthly market cap increases to reach $114 billion, while the market cap increased an, an additional 1.6% this July. So according to this latest data, USDT remains the largest market share of any stablecoin at nearly 70% of the market. In addition, on July 31st, Tether reported record profits of $5.2 billion, Andrew, in 2024. So that means in the first two quarters of 2024, Tether made $5 billion. That is really, really big. We also found out from this report yesterday that they have over $4 billion worth of Bitcoin on their balance sheet. So they're going out and buying Bitcoin. We'll talk about that later. Andrew, give me some of your thoughts and then I'll continue with my take. And you know, the, 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 the issue with USDT is they cannot comply to the Mika rules at the moment. Because they are not open enough that all those assets that they put in the market, so they mint, so you, you send one dollar into the USDT bank account, and then they mint one dollar, and then you have a digital dollar. That, that's the process. But if you send a digital dollar in the crypto world, then all those dollars should be backed by yeah by other assets that at least represent that value. And that's always a little bit yeah not so clear. USDC is doing them a better job. And that's why in, in, the, in the scope of the Mika regulation in Europe, they are indeed approved and they can work with this, with this regulation. So um, USDT uh, still has the time till the end of the year because then it, it, will, be, uh, it will be watched and then the, the, yeah, they can either yeah, withdraw themselves or, uh, or they are, are complied. So I'm, I'm wondering what will happen. They have still couple of months before it will be uh, uh yeah uh, will be uh yeah be, no sometimes uh, guys, I sometimes i'm missing the words that's okay <laughs> English Sorry, is I, think you meant, I think but, you meant implemented but 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 still you know and i think all those crypto exchanges and crypto companies that are doing business in europe they want to bet on two horses not only on the usdt but also on usdc that's why you see USDC growing at this moment. And I think that's wise. Wise to do. Do not put all your uh, eggs in one basket and, and diversify. Also, they need to do that. Agreed, cash flow. And think about this. I love the comment that we got from Mr. Moon here. Tether made $5.2 billion in profit in a completely speculative market. Welcome Ripple's US dollar stablecoin. Think about the profit that's going to be made for the company Ripple as well as the ecosystem for XRP, $5.2 billion in half a year. So this is a $10 billion in revenue company 
When you sell your company, you can, you can do a 10X on revenue if you're a tech company. So that means that this company is like $100 billion just based off revenue alone. Huge numbers we're talking about for something that's completely unregulated, right, Andrew? And this is an article that's not that important. I did want to sneak it in here, guys, because NFTs are, uh, NFT issuers are suing the SEC this morning. So I did just want to cover this very briefly. An artist, as well as a filmmaker and a songwriter, are suing the SEC to determine whether NFTs fall under the government agency's authority. The lawyers representing the case seek to clarify whether act, which acts could trigger securities laws regarding the minting and selling of NFTs. The lawyers used Taylor Swift's tickets as an example and argued that classifying NFTs as securities would be absurd in this example. So I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. We're seeing other companies now attacking the idea that the SEC can even regulate this market. What are your thoughts here? NFT issuers fighting back. Yeah, of course, they are right. I mean, what, what, a, what a BS. You know, you make, you make a piece of content, you make a piece of art, and then because the technology is there to distribute it over over the whole world very easily now it's a problem and in the past it was never a problem when it was just physical or you did not have the possibility to uh, to distribute it so easy so it, it's all in in the narrative of the sec what we saw in the past so you know they they stopped everything they were telling well every, every rule is clear now there was not a single rule was clear so i i can imagine that these artists say and now, and now it must be over. We want to have clarity. Stop, stop this BS. And uh, we want to do our work, and we want to serve our our fans with fancy NFTs and 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 all and, uh, and, and all other kinds of stuff. Right. And let's tie two videos together here to end the show, guys. We got 3,769 live listeners here. A lot of them are on Twitter, guys. Show us some love. Smash that like button. If you don't follow the 3T Academy YouTube channel, head on over and subscribe. We are live every single day at 11 a.m. to 12. Sometimes we go a little bit later, as you can tell right now. But we're going to tie two videos very short together to end the show here. Here's Brad Garlinghouse stating that they've partnered with several central banks around the world, many of which have not been announced. Uh, Ripple has partnered with several uh, central banks around the world. Some we've announced, some haven't yet announced that they're issuing uh, and testing using the XRP ledger to issue their digital assets on the XRP ledger as a, as a token. So you heard it right there. Central banks are testing minting assets on the XRPL. Whether it's a stable coin, whether it's a central bank digital currency, they're very similar from a technology standpoint, Andrew. And there was one more video I just got to locate it right here. We're going to play 20 seconds of this clip because we already know 300 institutions around the world are currently leveraging Ripple's products on the XRP ledger. And so we'd focus on elements of the solution we could solve. We started with solving the messaging problem. So, you know, many people here, I'm sure, are familiar with Swift. It's been around for 50 plus years. Not a lot of change until very, very recently. And so we created a better messaging system that allowed, you know, cross-border messaging to happen um, you know, much more quickly, highly reliable. So then we used digital asset. We focused on XRP as this bridge currency. Again, not trying to replace fiat on either side, but it's just trying to make the movement um, of the capital move at the same time the message move. You heard it right there, Andrew. XRP is being used to make money move like information. It's not replacing the US dollar. It's enhancing the capabilities. I think that's a great way to end the show. And yeah. give me some thoughts on that. So- you know, they now get familiar with, with XRP and with, with XRPL for messaging, the messaging problem they solved. Guess what is their next project? Stablecoin. Tokenized CDBC. assets. CDBC. Oof. Central banks, CDBC. And I think Ripple is an excellent supplier for those banks to do it. Do we have to worry? Do we have to be angry with, XRP, with, uh, with Ripple? No, because it is also a use case. You know, CDBC is a political issue. If it is technically possible and Ripple will not make it, somebody else will make it. So it's better that that uh, that Ripple will provide those central bank customers with the CDBC. And then at, at least if the usage of uh, XRP will go up, the use case, we are good to go. And the rest is uh, the rest is politics. The rest is politics, Andrew. And we're, what we're waiting for, and we'll leave this on the screen to end the show here, guys, 
is the hockey stick banana curve theory to come into effect, whether it's Raul Paul or it's Alex Cobb sharing these price charts. I think there is going to be a moment where, where all prices are increasing. We're going to get to celebrate together. But remember, you're making money here. And I think this is what Evan is a little bit. I don't think you appreciate how, how if you're making money just from holding an asset, you didn't earn it, right? So we're not doing anything to actually drive the use cases into the XRPL. We're not helping the adoption here. We're just putting our putting our money next to the big boys and hoping it it uh, increases next to the U.S. dollar. I don't think we have a right to to sit there and say I can't believe we haven't become millionaires yet. That's that's not something that's promised to everybody. And I think if you get that opportunity, even if it takes five, six, seven years, you're a lucky individual. So remain gratitude, stay optimistic, guys. I think there's plenty to be optimistic about in this entire market. And we already got almost 4,000 people here. I'm sure many of them agree with us, Andrew. So I want to give a special thank you to Andrew. Shout out to our man, Mario. Thank you to every single person that's uh, helping us and talking in the live chat. I want to say special thank you to Jim Kramer. Special thank you to Lovestock. We love you guys. We're going to be back in 23 hours. If you enjoyed this episode, show us some love. Smash that like button. Check out Andrew Cashflow's Cashflow course, guys. And we'll see you very soon. Have an amazing day. We love you. And like we always say, Warriors! Ha <laughs> ha! Get your shit together, baby. Thank you for joining. Have a great day, guys. Thank you, Andrew.